Like, I come from Little Rock, Arkansas. I come from nothing. So every chance that I get, all these are big moments for me to live out my dream. Just trying to ignite the crowd, ignite my teammates, and just let them know that we hungry and we here. We're giving the people what they want today. Bobby, a film room with yourself. I didn't know whether I should refer to you as Bobby, BP, POTUS. Like, what do you go by these days? I'm BP. BP? Yeah, I like BP. <laughs> We're here to watch some film. I noticed when you walk into press conferences, you've got an iPad a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. What kind of work are you doing on that? I watch film before every game. Um, this is like a routine I got into. Um, I watch our previous game um, on the same day of our game day. It just gives me something to do um, you know, before the game and it gives me mentally prepared um, to go out there and just try to, um, you know, Try to be the best Bobby Porter as I can out there on the floor for the basketball team. Um, it's fun too, and I've learned a lot more about myself and my game, and you know that's why my game has slowed down so much. So when we review some of these clips, you'll probably know all of them, right? Because you've watched it multiple times. Absolutely. <laughs> We're gonna go through all the different facets of your game. Offense, defense, hustle plays. We'll start with scoring though, okay. because you're at a career high right now, just over 15 points per game. This is that Orlando game where you had five threes in the first half. And we're gonna play back every single one of them and just see all the differences and where you were and when you got them. I know in the off season, you work to have your release be a little quicker, right? What were some of the drills that you were doing in order to, to help improve that area? Um, you know, catching shoots, um, going at my own tempo and own pace. Uh, watched a lot of film on, on, on the previous season, which was last season. And uh, sometimes I would hesitate to shoot, thinking that the guy's closing out and he's close. And most of the time, they really wasn't. Um, they actually were just still running. So um, I would like watch the film on that and see that I can still take my time, but still get it off just a little bit tad quicker. And uh, it's been working so far this season. On a possession like this one, I believe that's Robin Lopez, right? Do you think last year you would have passed that up? Uh, right now I couldn't because of time, the time, the shot clock Fair. going down. But uh, it depends, I probably would have tried to pump fake or get a one dribble pull up or something like that. But right now, shoot, I had already made a couple and it, the, the ball is feeling good and, and the goal is feeling even bigger. So shoot, it was just one of those times where you just got to let it fly. When you get hot, you get hot, like you score in spurts. <laughs> it, it, it's wild when it comes like that. For these threes that we just watched, what do you think that you were doing right when it came to your release, your feet, your form? Uh, most of the time, if I can catch the ball and seam the ball up and get the proper hand placements, um, if you ever notice, I never really miss left and right. Um, I miss if I didn't get the ball in the air a lot and it's short, or uh, if I get it up in the air, it's probably going to go in. I hate to say that, though, because it sounds like bad or cocky or something, but um, I, I put a lot of time into my shot um, over the years, um, hundreds and hundreds of shots a day. And, um, you know, I know when it's going in as soon as it releases my hand because it's, it's the feel of the ball and how the, how the laces come off your fingertips. For sure. Okay, explain this left to right. This is exactly what you mean left to right, right? Moving side to side towards the ball rather than going kind of front to back. Right? So right here, uh, we kind of worked on this just in the summertime um, with my trainer, Marcus McCurl. Uh, just moving without the ball and uh, getting to a spot um, on this one. Um, I knew we were trying to get two for one here because um, Coach said um, um, every time Coach says 33, that means we want to get it the shot off between you know 30 and 33 so we can get the ball back again um, with the 24 um, shot clock violation. So I'm um, on this one. Um, I threw it to George and just tried to get back out and, and shoot it. Um, I tried to get to the four-point line, so when I step in, most of the time last year, I, it was like 20 or 30 some threes that I could have made that was counted as twos because my foot was on the line, and that's why we that's why we implemented the four-point line for me. So when I step in, I'm not on the line anymore. For those wondering, Bobby Portis has labeled it the four-point line just so he has an area where he can try to get to that's a couple feet behind the line, so you make sure it's a three. What I find so interesting is you know because of all the film study you do after the season and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that you had like 
22s that could have been threes. Like that's yeah. why it's so important to study yourself, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, it, and it's cool to see it translate into games. Okay, so you hit all these threes and you feel, I love like the joy you have. I always say like every interview we do, you talk about how fun the game is. Yeah, you have fun. Sure. Like you can't take yourself too seriously. Okay, so this is the same game. And at this point, Orlando's like, okay, we know Bobby Portis is looking for a shot. You recognize that and take it to the rim. How does knocking down shots from the three point line open up plays like this for you? Man, it opens up tremendously, especially playing with good players uh, like all the guys on the team are. Um, our, when we get to our proper spacing, um, given you know, Giannis, Christian, Drew, driving lanes and stuff, um, those guys have so much attention on them that sometimes we're open and then the defense is trying to exile, backside, whatever it is. Um, our best offense is in transition where we're running. Um, I ran to the corner on this one, um, knowing that if I sprinted and got to the spot and get open, um, Drew's a great um, passer, so he'll hit me. And most of the time now, uh, guys run, they run at me, try to run me off the line. And it just opens up so many other elements of my game that I have, and it just unlocks it. We have another play on here that talks about you sprinting and getting rewarded. But what stands out to me is you said sprinting to my spot. And I know Coach Butt will have days where he just has you all sprint to the spots. Can you explain why it's so important to run in transition, not always to the rim, but to where you're supposed to be, whether it's, you know, the right side, the corner. Why do you think Coach Bud hounds you all that much to sprint back offensively into your spots? Oh, uh, because uh, when you sprint to your spots, it opens up, you know, driving lanes for, you know, like I said, Chris, Giannis, and Drew. I know with me, if I sprint to court, rim to rim, I might not get the basketball, but because I sprint hard, um, it makes the bigs get back. And sometimes if it's not a big that's on me, a guard has to get back and take me until the big comes. And now here's Grayson trailing in for a three, or here's Chris backside for a three. So, um, or Pat, because Pat's always in with me. He's wide open. So um, it's, it's, it's called sacrificing within a game. And it's uh, just called just, you know, being a, um, being a great teammate and being there for your teammates. Sometimes the play is not for you. When you go out there and run as hard as you can, it just opens up so much. Uh, so much things in, in your game and the team, the team's game. At this point, we've covered two of the three levels that we talk about in basketball, right? Three, mid-range, and now we're going back to the basket, Bobby Portis. So here you are, posting up. What's the key to finishing through contact? What are you focused on in order to try to make this shot even though you're fouled? Um, I try to get up as soft as possible on this one. Uh, he tried to pull the chair and just tried to make me fall down, but um, tried to stay as balanced as possible. And I tried to actually kiss it just um, up front, but his force made me throw it off the glass. Uh, didn't try to throw it off the glass right here, but it just happened like that. But just staying focused, uh, you know, locking in on it and just shooting it soft. That's what it is. Uh, trying to get an M1, you know, the contact is going to be there. So trying to shoot it as soft as possible with a soft, high soft touch. Um, so if it doesn't go directly in, it can bounce around and have the potential to fall in. So now we go to the opposite side of the game, defense. And I don't necessarily have a clip, but I have some comments from your head coach that I want you to listen to. He's, you know, his ability to, to, uh, to impact the game defensively, I think is improving and his hands, um, you know, awareness, you know, seeing and reading things. Um, you know, just it continues to be an emphasis and, you know, he's putting time and work in with film and, you know, coaches and things like that. So I think defensively he's getting better. When you first got here, defense was a big topic with you. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, I, I appreciate how open you are because you, you keep it real. And you said it was a transition for you to really understand the drop defense concept. What does it mean for you to hear Coach Bud talk like, Talk about you in that way when it comes to defense. Uh, it means it means the world to me, uh, especially coming from a coach of the year um, type of coach with that type of caliber of um, you know instincts and all the things he does um, for our basketball team on a defensive end. He's a he's a hell of a coach, but he's a defensive minded coach that wants to um, you know he wants all his players to play both sides. So to hear him say that. That makes me feel good, but I know I have a long way to go. Uh, I knew when I first got here, um, that was going to be the big question. Um, you know, could I hold up on the defensive end? Could I play defense? 
Um, everybody knew I always knew about my offense, but um, you know, most of the time, like my best defense was trying to figure out how to get back on offense fast. But being here in Milwaukee, it's all about um, playing both sides. Uh, you know, giving yourself up for the team and um, being there for you know your teammates. Sometimes if something breaks down, then um, you know the back side always fixes it, and the top side X's out whatever it is. So. Um, being here has definitely made me buy in on that end, especially when you want to win meaningful games, you have to um, play defense. Like, I think in the playoffs, I've seen a stat where like we shot like one of the lowest three-point percentages or something like that, and we won the entire thing. So, um, you know, that was all predicated towards defense. And, um, you know, watching film has, has gotten me better um, with the drop coverage. Uh, you know, Brooke is a... He's a Brooklyn Bridge. He's big back there. I'm not as big as Brook is, so um, we just kind of, you know, change how I do mine up, being at the impact of the ball and trying to use my feet, um, you know, more than my length. And I was going to bring that up, the fact that the coaches have allowed you to adjust to what works for you, especially with Brook being out an extended period of time. You're farther up, like you talked about. How nice is it to have that collaboration? Like, okay, yeah, like the Bucks are known for that drop defense, but this is what works for Bobby. And yeah. so we're gonna try to do this. It means good, man, cause like for me to be out there, obviously it's tough um, in the drop defense when you're back, uh, you know, for me, because um, it's like two on one, obviously. Um, I'm not a big time, big time rim protector. I block shots, but I'm not uh, as, as rim protecting as Brooke is, so he, he can, cat and mouse both of them and get back to the big they throw the lot whatever it is with me I like to get steals in the passing lanes and things like that and being up at the screen being able to impact the ball then get back to my man or if Giannis takes my man then I love to X out on the backside and use my feet uh, and stuff like that so um, it's been cool um, to see um, you know it's a progression in my defensive um, game and it's been cool for just to have the, the freedom and leeway to adjust to, you know, what works for me as well. The staple for you defensively, in my mind this season, is your rebounds. Rebounds. And I'm going to keep bringing it up because I remember media day, you said, I want to average a double-double, right? Yeah. And you're super close to that at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like that, to have like a goal, that's gratifying, right? And I know you're always pushing further, but that's got to be awesome to see it. So we're going to show just some classic BP rebound. And look, so they still box out in the NBA, right? This is yeah. proof. <laughs> I mean, like with me, I'm not a big time athlete. I'm not going to wow you with my athleticism. I'm not going to wow you with how I can jump and dunk the ball. Um, I can run fast and beat my man down the court. That's an advantage for me. And the advantage for me is boxing my man out, just trying to put a body on him because nine times out of 10, he probably jumps harder than me. So I probably need to put a body on him just so I can just have a little bit more advantage than him. So you do just that, you get the rebound, but this is, we talked about running to your spot. You run right to the rim and you get rewarded. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> that was the first thing that my mom and all my AAU coaches taught me how to do. That was my first, you know, attribute or, or I call it skill because playing hard and playing with energy is a skill uh, to me. And uh, that was my first thing that I learned how to do was just run the court. That's how I would like get all my, all my buckets. Obviously the offensive rebounds, putbacks, and running the floor and scoring like that, get like three or four of those and three or four offensive rebounds, shit. I'm almost at 20. Now we ain't counting free throw. That was just a, as a kid. That's how I used to always just try to get my points. Couldn't really shoot like that at first, and that came later on. Next one, another Bobby Hustle play. You just take it from Malcolm Brock. I mean, that's not nice, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so my question on this one is, <laughs> you love watching this stuff back. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, how does a play like this impact the basketball game aside from just the two points that you score? Because like, it's just not about like the two points. It's like, I took that ball from you and I'm gonna let you hear it. And I, and I want you to know that like, I'm here. Like it's bigger than that for me. Like with me, like I come from Little Rock, Arkansas. I come from nothing. So every chance that I get, all these are big moments for me to live out my dream. And I watched all my favorite players give it their all each and every night, playing for the name on the front of their jersey, trying to win big games. Won't have Giannis, won't have Chris this game, and just trying to ignite the crowd, ignite my teammates, and just let them know that we're hungry and we're here. And I think it's important maybe to touch on this aspect. Like, 
okay, you'll take the ball from somebody, you'll dunk it and kind of roar, but then you'll dap them up. Like, it's all love, right? Yeah. Like you're, you know, it's I mean, all in the heat of the yeah, game. Yeah, it's all in the heat of the game, man. Like, this is what we do, like, to provide for our families and build generational wealth for our kids' kids. So um, being able to uh, be in the NBA has been great for me. Um, I enjoy my time, especially playing for the Bucks. I enjoy my time here. Um, it's been fun being able to be on a team that's trying to win it all again. And um, all these plays matter, especially with, you know, some of our best players out. All right, so we've got one more clip. Holiday tries another. At that time, Portis the rebound, the putback, no good, but a foul. And the primal scream from Bobby Portis fires up the crowd. You get asked about it all the time, but Bobby, like, I get chills listening to that. I it's just almost, got them too. Almost 20,000 people chanting your name. You talk about where you come from and your background. I would say a dream, but like, I don't even know if you could even envision that, right? No, I ain't never really ever seen that happen. Um, man, just growing up as a kid, I was always had a dreams and aspirations of playing in the NBA. And I wanted it so bad, so much as a kid that you know, when we even lost basketball games, I would ask my mom, ask my, you know, my trainer and, you know, longtime friend and mentor, Marcus McCurl, like, how do I, like, how do I start winning? Like, when I'm gonna start winning? And I saw always get mad and angry because I wanted it so bad. And for me to be here in this moment, be in the NBA Finals, um, you know, to hear 20,000 people, I mean, 20,000 fans cheering my name, saying Bobby, like that's, like, I can't even put like those, I can't put that into like a, a description. Cause like, I seen people on Instagram and things, like when they play this, play this part or play this video, they always say like, what is he screaming for? He missed, he missed the, mm -hmm. the, the end one. But people don't really get it. Like I'm screaming because this is game three of the NBA finals. We're down two games. I just punked y'all for this basketball. I wanted more than you. And I'm gonna let you know that I wanted more than you. So I'm, I'm not screaming because I, I missed it and whatever it is, I wanted more than you. So it's in me to let you know that I want it. And I mean, that's just how I view the game and that's just the game within the game. What does your mom, Miss Tina, think of the Bobby Chance, people <laughs> going out of their way to get a Bobby Portis jersey, underdog, like what is, I know you get asked what you think, but what does your mom think? I think my mom's just extremely proud of me. Um, just, you know, I don't have kids or none of that, so I don't know how it feels to watch your son or daughter grow up um, yet. So um, I, 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 can, I can't fathom what that feels like for her. Uh, but just seeing my mom every day, um, you know, talking to her and seeing her in person, um, I know she's proud of me and I know that she know how far I've came just in my short time in the NBA in seven years. Um, she know like how it was and what, how much hard work I put in to get to this point. And uh, it was kind of refreshing, I know, for my mom for sure. She seen me down, um, but she seen me just never give up. Um, so um, I never see my mom give up. So having um, you know her as a someone I looked up to dearly, somebody that always had my back and always had my best interests and gave it her all, and even when times was tough. Um, I think she's she's really proud of me, and I know she got probably got chills too when she heard it too. So for sure, it's definitely one of those feelings that's one of those feelings I have for forever. Just having my mom there. NBA Finals, uh, watch all my favorite players. I, I used to watch the Finals with my mom sitting down, like watching LeBron and D-Wade. Like my mom was a big time D-Wade fan. Like she loved Dwayne Wade. So being able to be in the Finals, my mom be there um, and for us to come back and win it. Like that's one of those feelings I have forever. Like I'll never forget my mom walking onto the court, like crying, like that's, that's, that's like you can't even put, like can't even put that into, 
into like words, man. It's 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 a it's a blessed feeling. And a couple days later, they were all on that parade bus. The Bobby Portis crew was in full effect. Ah, uh, yeah, we was there. <laughs> we was loud and deep, man. It, it was cool just to have your family members there, your friends, yep. all the people that I grew up with. Like these are my close friends. Like I don't have. A, a lot of friends, like everybody that comes around me are like somebody that I grew up with from second, third, fourth grade. So to have like the people that known me since we was kids, like that's one of the best feelings ever for me. Like growing up with all my friends, having my same friends that I've been friends with for almost 15, 16 years, like that's, that's, that's unreal. That's a blessing for sure. You have had an incredible run so far. Just I'm just talking about this season. A lot of games to go. You're a guy that analyzes your own game. So what's something you want to focus on the second half of the season? Um, something I want to focus on in the second half of the season is um, hopefully coach can let me uh, start switching on to guards a little bit more, knowing that in the playoffs we're going to change our schemes up. And I want to be out there to help the team win. So. Um, you know, you have to give guys different looks. I probably can't be in the in the um, in the high drop the entire game, so I might have to start switching a little bit more. So that's probably one of the biggest things I want to key on and focus on, just um, getting conditioned for that mentally and physically. Um, but offense and like offense always come and go. But um, nowadays, I try to just hang my hat on just the defensive end because defense is going to keep you in games, going to help you win championships and. Um, try and be one of those teams that go back to back. Um, it's not going to be easy, so um, it's going to take all of us and all our defensive tactics. Sandwich technique here. So, what has you proud about the way you've played so far this season? What has me proud? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, every year I try to make a sacrifice with something. Mm -hmm. So, um, so one thing I really sacrifice, like I'm not. So, like I. Um, I I drink alcohol, so I might get a drink to go out go out to like eat or something like that or some. So, but I haven't had a, a a cup of alcohol since September, mm -hmm. so um, it's like 116 days since I've had wine or anything. So um, I have sacrificed that and um, I've got down. I was at like. 11 point some like 11.3 percent body fat and now i'm at 7.8 percent body fat so i've seen my body transform and just the sacrifices that you know that you make for you know it's the betterment of yourself is always good i respect that bobby thank you for sharing that that's dope appreciate Any, it. anything you're um like are you into juice now what do you so i just i just try to eat clean um stay away from you know um Getting glasses of wine at dinner and stuff. You know, sometimes you might just go to dinner and get a glass of wine. I might be at home, get a glass of like, just try to stay away from that. And um, I just try to stay, stay in shape. That's awesome. Well, you're one of the good guys. Rooting for you always. Thanks Appreciate for Appreciate that.